Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I want to talk about the wonder remittance device in Dynamic 365 Business Central. So I will fo focus on the format for that wonder remittance device when you send out from the payment journal through the functionality called send remittance device, okay? So um, this video is based on you already set up the EFT in your Business Central. If you haven't and you want to use this, this functionality, then you can watch another YouTube video on my YouTube channel for the how to set up EFT in Business Central. So I already created this payment journal line for this one that I have for EFT and you could see the payment method is set up as an EFT and the bank payment type is set up as an electronic payment. So uh, usually for the EFT process, the first step you have to do, you have to go to your bank and then click on export. When you do that, then it will, so I cannot export it anymore because I already did that. Once you do that, after you have done that, you can see the check printed is marked, okay? And uh, when you do that, it will print out either, you, based on the, uh, the output format you selected, you can, when you export, you can at the same time email the remittance device to your vendor, or you can just print it out as a PDF. But usually the process for most of the clients, when you export that, you don't want to send it yet. You want to generate the EFT file and upload to your bank. After your bank accepted the EFT file, then you want to send an email. So that's why it comes to play after you did that, after you, after you, after you export at that step, you only just the output to the PDF format. And then you have to go to the related and go, uh, you have to go to the actions and go to functions and generate the EFT file. This step is to generate a TXT file, which you will upload to your bank portal. So after that, then after your bank accepted that EFT, uh, EFT file, then you want to email the vendor the remittance device. So that's how this step comes to play. You have to click on related and go to payments and click on send remittance advice, okay? So uh, based, my, based on my current uh, vendor document layout selection, when I do this, then you can see that it pop up the document sending profile I need to use. And then if I just select, I want to prompt, I want to prompt me so I can see, I can check the, the emails I'm gonna send out, okay? But if you have a default document layout you, you already selected for your vendor, then this will not show up. You will not see this pop up. Or if you multi-select, if you multi-select the, uh, if you select, if you have multiple lines and you multi-select and, and click on this, it will send out an badge without uh, just a pop up this message. If you just select one and do this, then you will see this pop up. Okay, so when you do this and uh, you see this pop up and then we select all these, we want to use the prompt so we can see how it looks like before we send it. And then you can see I have the email body for this remittance device. And also if you scroll down, I have the PDF. But if you click on this PDF, you open it, then you can see it doesn't have your company information shows up on the right hand side corner. But so this is a document layout issue and I want to focus on, on this video because uh, if we look at this vendor on the vendor card, so this vendor is uh, the vendor for uh, the vendor number is 10,000. If we go to this vendor, open this vendor card and open the document layout. So for the remittance device, there's two reports you can use. One is the 11383. This is a word layout, word layout. And the 10083, this one is a RDLC layout, okay? How do I know that? So if you go to your report layout selection and then just filter by uh, remittance of the, uh, electronic, this report name, export electronic payments, then you will see those reports. But I'm gonna use the, but if you, I'm just gonna use the report number. I'm just gonna search for these two report number there. So when you do that, you see they have the same name, export electronic payments, okay? And you, when you do that, you could see this 10083, the layout type is RDLC, 
and one one three eight three the layout type is word. That's how you know what layout it's using. And then what's the difference between those two layout? So if you select word layout one one three eight three, then you will be able to uh define a custom report. You, you will be able to create a custom reporting out and set it up as an email body. But if you select the report 10083, which is the RDLC layout, uh, Business Central does not allow you to create an email body for the RDLC layout. It, so you remember this report layout is the RDLC layout, but it did allow me to select an email body in this. This tenant is a Business Central tenant brought up in the US. The region is US. So it's really odd the the local localization for the us tenant it does not prevent you to select the rdlc reporting out as an email body okay but it's also there are some differences from different localization even it's us and canada and if you are on uh if you are on a canadian business central uh tenant like you are a uh, region when you brought up your business central tenants, the region you selected, if it's a CA, then it will stop you. It will error out at this step. When you select the email body for a RDLC custom report layout as the email body, it will error out. It will tell you like you cannot select, use the RDLC report for the email body. But this US tenant, it allowed you to do that. So this, I don't know why Microsoft allowed this, but it's uh, kind of misleading. But at the end, if you go to our payment journal, so because we changed the vendor document layout to use that one, uh, to use the RDLC layout as the email body. And when you go to related and go to payments and send remittance to voice, when you do this step and it, it will pop up the arrow. So you see the HTML output format is not supported by the current report layout format. So it still tells you the RDLC report layout is not supported to be used in the email body because in the email body, it has to be converted to HTML, HTML format. But it's just too late if you just uh, tell the user uh, there's an arrow for that setup at this step. So I don't know why Microsoft do this for the US tenant, but actually just uh, do not set up an RDLC report layout as the email body, right? So we have to delete this. Then instead, you have to set up the other report. If you do want to use, uh, if you do want to use uh, uh, email body in your, uh, when well, you send out the remittance advice, okay? So that report number is 11381183. Now you have to put that in. So I'm just gonna delete this one. And then I'm going to select our, let's put in my email and just uh, pay attention to here as well. If you leave the custom layout description to be, this custom layout is going to be used as a PDF attachment. So if you leave it blank, then it's going to use the auto box uh, report for 11383, uh, the default report auto box one. If you, if you have some custom report selected, then you can select them. So if you have a um, uh, attachment like this, you have an email attachment created, and then you have an email body, so you can select them from here. So this will be the PDF attachment, and then you can uh, create a email body, custom re reporting out for the email body. I'm gonna use this one, okay? And uh, so I changed that back, but the problem for this is like, uh, if I go to that custom report layout, right? For that word document layout, no attachment, okay? So if I run this report from here, then uh, I turn on print company address and preview it. Then I will be able to see this company picture and then this uh, company information. So all these are from the company information, right? But if you run it from here, there's a switch called print company address. You can turn on and off from the report request page. But when you do it from the payment journal to send out the remittances wise, if you go back to the payment journal, 
it does not have this required request page, right? So that's why we are getting that issue. When we do that, then it just, uh, there's nothing printed for the same report in the attachment. There's nothing printed for the company picture and the company uh, address information, nothing printed. On the right-hand side top, you could see it's all blank, okay? So I ended, I ended up spent lots of time uh, just to figure out why it's printing, why it's not printing. And I did everything I can on that report to see if there's a, I just exported uh, this Word document layout for the attachment. So this is the email attachment. Then if I export this layout and uh, look at this report layout in Word, and then you could see this part, right? And you go to developer and then XML, my ping pang, and then select this report. Then, um, then you can see where it's coming from, right? So this is coming from the copy loop, page loop, uh, then print company address, and uh, it's coming from here. So I was checking everything, play around with all this part, remove it and hard code it, no matter what I do. It still doesn't apply, it does, doesn't display on the send remittance device from the payment journal. The problem is like it doesn't have the report request page. And by default, by default, so to print that company information is false. So you will never be able to, when you send the remittance device and use this as a Word document layout as an attachment, you will never be able to print this out, okay? So a workaround is like your developer has to customize it. You have to create some, extend that report and create some custom field for the company picture, company address, those, and you have to change this Word layout to use that, those custom fields. Then you should be able to uh, send, you should be able to display that information. Oh, another workaround. If you don't mind, that you don't want, so because the comp company information and picture and the logo does not change very frequently, right? So uh, then you can just uh, remove all these parts, remove all those parts, right? And then, um, but I, I even tried that. So like, even we do that, as long as you use this section for the control, you have to remove the this whole section for this content content control. And then it may be able to display. Otherwise, as long as you just uh, work under this area, then put a uh, hard code, uh, just copy the logo from somewhere as a picture here. Don't use a field mapping from Business Central and copy the address, like kind of like a hard coded. If you still use just put it under this these controls, then you will still not able to see it. You have to delete a whole section for these controls, content controls. Then you can copy the logo and see it, okay? You have to do something. Either you have to use custom fields and then extend that report to default it to print uh, the company information and use your custom fields. Otherwise, you have to remove this whole section for whatever the content control all these sections are using, then just the hard code your uh, company logo and address in this report. Okay, so that's something I want to share because I spent lots of time just to want to make this part, this section show, but it never showed. And then we have to do some development for that. Thank you so much for watching this YouTube video. I hope to see you guys again next time.